Hi everyone. Um, welcome to Community Meditation. I'm John and Genova, and every Wednesday we meet at 6.45 p.m. Pacific to do a brief Dharma talk or teaching, followed by a 20-minute meditation. So while we give everyone some time to get settled, I'm starting about a minute early, be sure that you scroll to the lower left of the screen if you're viewing from the Samadhi for Peace website and just pause the music. That way you will be less distracted during the meditation. Be sure to silence your cell phones. And then find a comfortable seat. And this could be on the floor with legs crossed or in a chair with your feet planted on the floor. For the first uh, 15 minutes or so, we're just doing the teaching, so um, don't feel any pressure to sit still throughout the teaching. You've got 20 minutes for that after the teaching when you're going to try to be as still as possible in both mind and body. So for tonight's Dharma talk, um, I'd like to share with you my personal meditation practice. This is something that I'm often asked. I have studied various types of meditation and teach um, various types based on where the student is at or what they're interested in. So for some students we do walking meditation, for other people we focus on mindfulness meditation, and the meditation that I do in my personal practice was taught to me by Lama John McCransky, and he is the founder of the Foundation for Active Compassion. He's also a professor at Boston College where I went to school and where I met him. And these meditations are rooted in Tibetan traditions, but they've been modified for the Western practitioner. The language that Lama John uses is, is easily accessible. Words like suffering that are often talked about in the Dharma or Buddhist teachings are difficult for Westerners to understand because our idea of suffering is quite different than in other, other cultures. So having a teacher who's able to grasp the essence of the teachings and share them in a way that makes sense to the student is an integral part of the lineage that I'm most familiar with and that I have chosen for my personal practice. But I think that it's important for new practitioners to try various types of meditation until they find the one that resonates with them. Once you find that practice that really speaks to you on a vibrational level, so you feel as though you just get it, there might be a sense of coming home a feeling of ease within the practice. Once you, you stumble upon a method where you have those feelings, then stick with that method for about five years. Now that sounds like a long time, but if we dart from one form of practice to another, we never really get into the root of it. But if we spend about five years with something, that gives us enough time to face issues of um, attachment, perhaps attachment to ideas that we don't want to let go of, that the practice may challenge within us. It also helps us to work through issues that we might have with our teachers. It's quite common. And if you've chosen a practice that is um, a sutra practice, meaning the teacher-student relationship is not essential, you're learning through books, the same is true. The book in that case is the teacher. The authors of the books, the words on the pages are your teacher. So stick with something. Once you find the one that resonates with you, be sure to give it enough time to really deepen the practice. So these meditations are called meditations of innate wisdom and compassion. And there are many steps a varying depth. But tonight's practice will be a beginning phase that 
you can practice for months and years before moving on to what is the next phase, perhaps even a lifetime on this one portion of the meditation. And this meditation is deeply healing. I find that most people grasp it the first time that they try it. They really feel a deep connection with it. And in this meditation, we connect with benefactors. Benefactors are those who hold us in a wish of love. And this wish of love is a wish for our deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. And already some benefactors might be coming to mind. Maybe a special relative or friend or partner. But in the beginning, we can focus on, rather than focusing on a person as a benefactor, we can focus on a moment in time, that moment serving as our benefactor. Because when we think about the whole person, more than likely we'll have some good memories of them and some not so good memories of them. And those not so good memories might interrupt the meditation. So if this is your first time trying the benefactor's meditation, when I ask you to to recall a benefactor, you can try recalling a moment in time. So right now let's think about a moment in time when you felt deeply loved, you felt seen, accepted for all that you are. And this moment may have happened with a stranger. Mm -hmm. There are great benefactor moments that happen just when we're walking down the street and we make eye contact with someone and it's that special eye contact. You feel the warmth of their presence. You feel that somehow they get you, or maybe you get them too. And I'm not talking about in a romantic, checking the person out sort of way. It's that warm smile, a very genuine, sincere smile that may come through. Another moment might be when you were a child and someone really took interest in what you were doing, like it was worthy of their attention, maybe an adult. And as children, we're used to adults not really being into what we're doing. Maybe there was a special aunt. I had um, an Aunt Betty who, whenever she came over, she would play with us in a way that, boy, she was really into what we were doing. And Aunt Betty was a smart lady. And if she found what I was doing to be fascinating, I thought that was really cool. I felt really special. I felt smart. I felt loved. I felt like, what I was interested in was worthy of being interested in. Some of these moments might be with animals. Special time with your cat or dog. So just think for a few moments about a benefactor moment. A moment when you felt held in love. When you felt seen. And so, if you have a few benefactor moments in mind, this practice is not new to you or you feel comfortable with the idea of a benefactor moment, then we can look at the two types of benefactors that exist. These are benefactors from our ordinary life and spiritual benefactors. So benefactors from our ordinary life. This might be, as I mentioned, a special relative who you just loved spending time with them or love spending time with them. Maybe a grandparent, could be a sibling, a cousin, perhaps a mentor or a coach, someone who has been a touchstone in your life. You feel safe around this person. You may not understand why, but you feel held in love by this person. So just think for a few moments about benefactors in your life, people who have held you in a wish of love, 
the wish for your deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. You might notice that bringing these people to mind, or animals, might evoke a warmth, that feeling of love. You might feel their presence just in their memory. That's the beginning of this meditation, but we'll get to that. Next, bring to mind spiritual benefactors. Now, these are, are people that you may not have met, but people whose love seems all-encompassing. So this could be um, a political activist you feel a strong connection to. It could be a religious or spiritual leader. Someone like Martin Luther King, the Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, so bring to mind someone who you connect with, who's a spiritual benefactor, someone whose love is all-encompassing, who sees and fights for an equanimity amongst all people. If you've been practicing meditation with me for a long time and you have chosen to explore um, the lineage that I study, my teachers and their teachers are your spiritual benefactors. Living or dead, they're here with us. And these are people who hold you in a wish of love the wish for your deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. So in this meditation, we bring to mind our benefactors, our benefactor moments, benefactors from our ordinary life, and spiritual benefactors. And we do this at different points during the meditation. And we allow ourselves to feel the warmth of their wish, the warmth that they exude. Because in the moments that we were with them, or in those benefactor moments, there's a chance that we were distracted by our own inability to accept their love, or just by what was happening in the moment. So we take this time to practice accepting this wish that they have been giving to us, or trying to give to us. And accepting this wish of love can be challenging. So if you feel resistance, let go of any frustration for yourself and just move into, oh, I'm just practicing being open. I'm just practicing being open to these feelings of love from another person or from a particular moment when I was engaged with someone. And notice that it's, it's challenging for you. And notice the feelings that arise, the ways in which your resistance manifests itself. And that in itself becomes the meditation, the noticing. And if you can catch a moment when you are accepting their wish of love, you feel their warmth, then just allow it to completely bathe you. watching what happens as you allow this. Okay, so it's just about 7 o'clock. If you need to adjust your posture, do so now. Finding a comfortable seat on the floor with legs crossed or in a chair with feet planted on the floor. And the important thing is that we're holding our body in such a way that there's room for our breath. Palms 
facing down on knees. Chin is slightly tilted towards your chest. Eyes are closed. Or gaze is on the floor in front of you. If possible, gaze is slightly downward. We're practicing being fully aware during these meditations. Relax the muscles in your face. As you settle in, let go of any expectations that you have for this meditation or for yourself. If you would like, set an intention for tonight's practice. Breathing this intention into every cell in your body. And then just letting it go with your exhale. We'll take five deep and cleansing breaths. This week we'll do something a little bit different. This is what I do in my own practice. It's called vase breathing. And we make a vase or vase with our bodies. So filling the belly all of the way on our inhale, breathing in through the nose, holding when our belly is fully expanded, and then sending our mind, our thoughts, our entire being, breath is still held, into our low belly holding it there for as long as we can without too much strain, and then releasing, letting it all go. You can exhale through your mouth. So it looks like this. Inhale, hold, send everything down into the low belly, holding it there. And release. Inhale, fill the belly all the way, hold, send your mind, thoughts into the low belly, holding them there. And release. Inhale, hold. and let it go. Inhale, fill the belly, send thoughts, mind, everything down into the low belly, hold it there. And release. Last one, fill the belly all of the way, send everything down, Hold. And release. Now breathing in and out through your nose. Relax your breath. Take a moment to just allow everything to be. Tonight, we are going to ask our benefit, benefactors to aid us in our meditation and healing. 
Benefactors are those who have held us in a wish of love. The simple wish for us to have deep well-being and happiness. Those who hold us in that simple wish are often the ones that we especially like to be near. One way to identify your benefactors is to recall people that you really like to be near at any point in your life. You might recall a dear relative, a friend of your parents that you adored being with, a teacher or professor, or a coach. You might recall a friendly stranger that you encountered for even a moment at the store, walking down the street, or at the park. Benefactors are people whom it feels good to remember because their wish for our happiness, the simple wish of love, makes it feel so safe to be in their presence. So bring to mind benefactors from your ordinary life or a benefactor moment when you ha felt held in a wish of love. Now try bringing to mind a few spiritual benefactors, people who embody for you a stable and an impartial love that seems to include everyone in its scope. Spiritual benefactors are those who have inspired or blessed you through their words or writings or the quality of their presence for you. Now that you have identified your benefactors, we'll begin the meditation. Bring your benefactors to mind. Imagine their smiling faces before you. Imagine the detail in their eyes. The detail of their smiles. and the warmth that they exude. See and feel their presence. And now envision your benefactors sending you the wish of love, the wish for you to have deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. Sensing these wonderful people and animals before you, gently open to their wish of love for you and receive it.
imagining their wish is a gentle radiance, like a soft shower of healing rays. Bathe your whole body and mind in that tender radiance, all the way down to your fingertips and toes. Bask in the loving energy of that wish for your deepest well-being. Trust it. You don't need to trust every aspect of all benefactors, just the wish of love that they radiate, the simple wish for your well-being and happiness. Receive the gentle healing energy of that radiance. As other thoughts or feelings arise, just let them be enveloped in this loving luminosity. And no matter who you think you are or what you think you deserve or don't deserve, all such thoughts are irrelevant now. Just accept your benefactor's wish of love for your deepest well-being and happiness, trusting that wish more than any lim limiting thoughts of yourself. Receive it into your whole being. If your mind starts to wander, just gently bring it back to the instruction. Recall your benefactors and receive the radiant energy of their love. Holding your benefactors in your mind's eye, receive their wish like a gentle shower of radiance, bathing your whole mind and body. Be at ease, open and accepting, like a puppy basking in the morning sun, passively soaking up its rays. Just relax and absorb the soft healing energy of love into every cell of your body, every corner of your mind. Bathe in this. Heal in this. Rest in this radiance. Give yourself permission 
to take the time to fully receive this simple wish of healing love for you. And now join your benefactors in their wish for you. While receiving their wish for love, Mentally repeat the wish for yourself. May this one have deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. Repeating those words in your mind while referring to yourself. May this one have deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. Mentally repeat that wish for yourself while accepting your benefactor's love more deeply into body and mind, communing with them through that radiance. Finally, just let yourself merge into oneness with your benefactors in that radiance. Let go into complete oneness with the radiance, dropping the visualization of benefactors, and releasing any attempt to hold on to any frame of reference. Just deeply, let everything be. Relax into that gentle, luminous wholeness beyond separation of self and others. Enjoy just being at ease, at rest, complete. Take a moment to absorb the feeling, the sensation in your body, allowing your breath to guide you back into the room. When you're ready, gently opening your eyes. If you would like, dedicating the merit of your practice. Thank you all for joining for another week of community meditation. I hope that you enjoyed these meditations uh, written by Lama John McCransky. And if you enjoyed them, please um, look for his book. It's called Awakening Through Love. And in it, he has a series of meditations that are written, but you can also buy a CD to accompany the book. Highly recommended. And if you're in the California or 
Northern California area. Um, Lama John happens to be in Leggett, California this weekend, and I believe there's still room for his retreat. It begins Friday evening and goes through Sunday. It's an incredible opportunity. He lives and teaches primarily in, in Boston. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I can send you all of the information about the book or the retreat or these meditations. My email address is info at samadhiforpeace.com and I'll, I'll put all of the links below through the, the YouTube link, which you'll be able to find in a couple of minutes. Many thanks to all of you. Please look for your benefactor moments and benefactors throughout this next week. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.